Hello. Zombies. Hello. Voice on right, top I, of totally the voice. <laughs> I totally forgot. I it's good, you're forgot. in character. I'm in character. Today we will be taking off this mystery person's makeup. Hello. This is my little uh, termite creature. Yes. <laughs> I'm the termite ghoul queen. Would you like to tell them your backstory before we get started? So the thing is, I was a gorgeous, beautiful queen once, and we ran out of wood, and I started eating people, and then look at me now. You heard it here first, folks. So the thing that we do on this little segment is uh, I take off people's FX makeup while um, we talk. We chit chat. That's it. That's the concept. But the fun thing is you don't know who's under here. So if you can guess in the comments, don't go to the comments mm -hmm. and look at the answer. I know that you're tempted to. Don't. 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 Don't do it, I swear to God. Or the termite will haunt you. Oh, place. the termite queen ghoul will get you good. <laughs> Look at your one bouncy curl. <laughs> I know. You're just bouncing I, it I, around. I like the curl, though. Let me tell you, that's finesse. I'm an emo ghoul. This could be anyone. Anyone in the world. And by the end of this video, you will find out exactly who it is. We're doing everything backwards here. We're starting with the montage, and now we're going to get naked. I love getting naked. Which is good, because you got a lot of clothes on as, right as now. As a termite queen, I love getting naked. I have a lot of kids. That could be the real accent. You don't know which you, one's real. You don't know, do you? To get to know you, we are going to go trick-or-treating. In here, we have lots of questions. Some of them are treats, like just stuff that will help us get to know the person under the termite. Mm -hmm. And some of which are tricks and they are, well, you'll see. <sighs> I'm scared, but I'm excited. I'm titillated. <laughs> That's a great word. I know I have Britney vibes because of my little... You are. I am not a pop star. However, I need hands free. And we need to separate our voices so that we can modify yours and leave mine the same. Otherwise, no. I would sound like a sexy demon right now. And only you... No one can take that from me. No. And there... no one can take that from me. That's my role. There can only be one. There can only be one sexy demon here. It's you. Yeah. Yes. I have some uh, warm-up starter questions for us just mm. to get your brain going. And then I'm going to start cutting in your face. <gasps> okay. Start me off. For these questions, um, you're going to give me the first answer that comes to mind. Okay. Don't overthink it. I want rapid fire. Freudian like a answer. A just rapid. <laughs> you want something quick. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Something you love. My family. Good. Okay. That was great. You, you almost hesitated. I did. Something you hate. Uh, oh my God. This is hard. Oh, first thing. Hate. First okay. thing. Uh, bad people. Great. Okay. <laughs> That's great. That's a good thing to hate. I don't like, I don't like them. We hate bad people. I hate them. Something you're learning. Spanish. Nice. But I'm not. Oh. I just my head. <laughs> Something that inspires you. My mom. See, there was no oh hesitation there. No that, was that, was that was real. That was real. That was real. Yes. <laughs> that was real. Three words to describe you. Charismatic. Nice. And energetic. Yes. Yes. Do you think those apply to me? Yeah. Absolutely. Period. So by now you should all know who's here. It's obviously... A demon. Duh. I can't tell you exactly why yet, but we have a lot of work to do to get you out of here. The thing is, Don't. I'm sweating like a sinner in church. <laughs> and I can't even step foot in their church anymore. Because I will burst in flames. That's good. That's helpful because we put everything on with prosades that it's water-based. And if you sweat, it'll break down and it'll be easier to get off. There's hair in my mouth. <laughs> oh, it's wet. All right, hold on. Let's get you a little beret. <gasps> oh my God, I'm a cute queen. <laughs> Look at my beret. <laughs> I love Anthony laughing. Pick your background. first question. I'll read it for okay. you. I just need you to pick one. Oh my god. Would you rather look 20? Look at that, you see that? <laughs> I'm falling apart. I need more blood. I need more blood. Would you rather look 25 and feel 75 or look 75 and feel 25? Oh my gosh. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I would rather be 75 and look... Nope. Uh, that's the wrong thing. I would rather be 75 and feel 25. Because I feel like as you get older, it starts to fade. And, like, looks don't matter as much when you get older. You know what I mean? Not that they matter now. They do, though. But I feel like I want to feel good at all times, whether I'm ugly or not. And that's period. <laughs> And honestly, I might look worse, you know? Uh, oh, wow. It's like, it's on there, huh? I just need an entry point, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what he said. Or she, <laughs> you know, as a they, them, you never know. Okay, we have made entry. Would you rather find $100 floating in a public toilet or $5 on the sidewalk? $5 on the sidewalk. Let me tell you something about what? the termite queen. I ain't going into no toilet. 
Okay. Wait, public toilet. Like, is there shit in there? Public toilet. There could be. Okay, if it's a public toilet, there can pee pee anywhere. Like, that's disgusting. I'm finding the five. Listen, I can buy so much with five dollars. Five things specifically from the dollar menu. <gasps> this feels so liquidy inside. Oh, that's that sounds very said. appropriate. Yeah. But like, appropriate. Pick another, cause you're you're getting all the tricks. Oh, are those are those the treats? And none of the treats. None of the treats. The treat is, do you have any weird recurring dreams? This is the most thing I've ever dreamed in my whole life, is teeth falling out, a hundred percent. It's a common one. And honestly, and they, for some reason, they feel the most real to me. I'll, I'll like freak out my dream and I wake up and I'm like, and I'm okay. Like, do you have you ever dreamt that? No, I've never had a teeth dream, which is weird because I know a lot of people have them. Oh my gosh, that hair was about to make me gag, I'm not kidding. It was going down like a spaghetti noodle. They didn't chew. Can, can anyone tell me what dreaming about teeth falling out means? Because there's Change. always like a dream and oh, and you already know. Yeah, I looked it up many times and it has to do with like fearing change or not ready for like the next step or something like that. Mm, so, so what do you- So like a big thing, I'm like, Ugh. Okay, so then I have to ask, what change are you fearing? What's the next step? I'm moving, I'm moving soon. Oh yeah? Yeah, I'm moving soon. So that has been my like freak out. And like literally the other Why night, are you freaking out? If there's so much that you need to do before you move, you know, and it's like a very quick transition. So you just have so much to do. Like it's not like that I'm freaking out. I'm like, really excited about it. It's just like, and I'm not ready for that kind of shit. <laughs> I'm not ready for that kind of commitment. That's not that's that's a that's a good <laughs> exciting change. Yeah, you're right. I'm, and I'm and I am very, very excited about it. And literally like my house just sold, so I'm like Hell yeah! It's it's coming. A clue. It's a coven. They have a house. <gasps> they have a house. Do you want to tell us where you have a house? In LA. In LA. I feel like that's a good. We got an LA person. Clue. That really Not narrows it down. In LA. Not a lot of uh, internet people in LA. In oh. Internet? I oh. guess I, I guess I did. Clocked the house. Down. I did give that up, huh? Clocked. Termite is saying next one, please. Would you rather be stuck in one city for the rest of your life or have to move to a new place every single year? Yeah. Speaking of moving, wow, guys, wow. Here. psychic so termite. I, I, so as the queen, I also have some supernatural powers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it's something I had discovered recently, and I just manifested that. And for me, I think that my answer would be, I would have to just stay in one spot forever. I can't move once a year. You want to know a fun I'd fact die. about me? Whoa. I've lived in LA for uh, nine years, and I've moved nine times. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> so you know my answer. So, so you would rather move nine times? I do like moving, because I like redecorating a space. Got like it. everything's Got it. new, and I get to like, you know? Yeah. I'm a, a creature of habit. I'm a creature of habit. I love a little routine. I love a little thing. I'm like, let me just go to the gym. Let me I like work. change. Let me live. <gasps> change is like, that's good. I, but I've also like never even like dyed my hair before. That's a clue. So I'm not the biggest like, yeah, I just like embrace change so much. My teeth are fucking falling out literally. <laughs> In my dreams. How's so this feeling so. by the way? Not bad. Hey, is it coming off? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that's not that bad, dude. Okay, good. That's good because There's a reason. There is a reason. You'll see why. And no, you're gonna yell reason. at me when you see why, but it's not my fault. It, I it's the termite's it. fault. I as the termite queen ghoul, I accepted it. <laughs> <laughs> what is your biggest fear? My biggest fear? Yeah. <sighs> Give it to me. I think my biggest fear is like my parents passing away. Really? Honestly, like that's like my, the, that's the one thing I stress about the most. And like, of course, like I am super scared of the ocean. I'm scared of I'm claustrophobic. Like you I have, have all those the fears. same fears. I have those things. Like I don't like open sea or that. I don't either. I can't. I can't. Do you want to go on a boat with me? No. You know what I've been playing so much of lately? What? Raft. Why and it's helping like, me get oh, over it's helping my fear. fear. Yeah. Got it. A See, bit. The thing is, I don't even mind the fear. Let's rotate you. You look like a little lump. I, so I, am. <laughs> it's I have very, my shoulders are very a tell. Yes. My shoulders are a tell. Let me tell you that. It could be Arnold Schwarzenegger under and there. You do, you would never and know. if you saw those shoulders, you'd know right away. Mm -hmm. It could also be Sarah Connor. I could be Preacher under here and you would never know. True. So, yeah, so th those are like my other fears, but my main fear, of course, is like my parents passing away. And I don't know what I would do, especially because I'm the oldest child that I get even more paranoid.
Oh, do you feel like a sense of responsibility because you Yeah, parents? I do. Because I want to make sure that they're okay. Mm -hmm. And like, I always, I think I'll always have that just because they're my siblings and I care and I love for them. I care and love for them. I care about them and I love them. Mm -hmm. But I always get like really like nervous. In my head, I'm always like, you're never going to die. And I tell my parents all the time, you guys are going to die. So yeah, no, no pressure, guys. Just yeah, no, I was like, you guys are going to die. So, and like when I was younger, I used to tell my mom, I was like, I'm going to die first. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be the worst the thing worst. for her, and though. Then, and then, like, I finally realized as I got older that it would be like the worst thing ever for a parent to lose yeah. their kids. So I'm like, you can't go first. I can't. Like, I can't. So I know. Like, I know that I can't go first. But like, I wanted to. <laughs> That's stuck on. That is really on. I worked really hard to get those teeth you stuck did. on. You really so did. I'm and glad. They are, they are glued for filth. You're gonna ask yourself your own questions now. You can't also be asking yourself. I gotta do something here. You're taking Give it me. off. What were you like as a little kid? So as a kid, I was super shy. Very, very shy. Very shy kid. Um, I didn't. I was very attached to my mom, and I like if I was. She would tell me that if I was going to school, I'd like latch onto her leg and be like, you can't leave me. I'm not leaving. You're not leaving until I get through this class today. So I was very much that kid that was like a, you know, a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, I said boy. A mama's name. That, that's okay. You, you can, you can reveal that. I can reveal that. I'm a mama's, mama's boy. I'm a mama's boy. So I, that was like kind of how I was. And I was just, I was just very, very shy. I was very introverted. I grew up in a very religious environment. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really feel like I could be myself constantly just because I was, I was fearful of what people would think of me. So I was very shy and introverted. How do you feel about that like now when you think back on your childhood? Because I feel mm -hmm. like I think it's common to see. I mean, not always, but some people I think can see their childhood through rose colored glasses until they hit a, you certain, know, age. a certain age. And then all of a sudden they kind of reevaluate it's a lot clarity, of things. It's a clear as hell. Mm hmm. Yeah, do you feel differently about your childhood now than you did when you were growing up? Actually, no, not really. I feel like it's, I knew, like, I had, like, struggles and there were so many things that I was, like, working on myself and that I hid for a long time. So I feel like if I regretted things and I wouldn't get to my spot now and I love me now more than I ever have. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever try to regret anything. Those challenges make you in some way? Yeah, and I feel like the challenges totally make me who I am and, I, and I'm grateful for the challenges. They were tough. And what would really you say hard. is your your biggest challenge that you've had to face so far? I think it was more so an inner battle of like coming out, especially growing up very religious and my parents not really understanding. They thought it was a choice and my family thought it was like, like why can't you just like choose to date a girl instead? So it really took a lot but of time. You always knew. I actually I really didn't. I was very much the like pray the gay way kind of kid. Oh really? Well, I didn't really know and I was in denial for like years and years and years until I was like 19. I was 19. In super denial. Yeah, because I went to like therapy that was like not. Like conversion therapy? Kinda. Wow. Yeah. How do you feel about that now? I mean, when I look back, I'm like, it sounds like so intense and crazy, but like when I did it, it wasn't as bad as it was for a lot of other people. Like for me, mm -hmm. it was about like your homosexuality is tied to your anxiety. And like, if you just weren't anxious, you wouldn't be gay either. Uh, oh. And I was like, well, you know. That's interesting. Know, the same thing. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't have it where I was like in conversion therapy camp and I was getting electrocuted or anything like absolutely Jesus Christ, horrible. I so I didn't have that same experience, but I was in there for like six months and it was really tough. But anyone telling you that you're not who you are is, is traumatic in its own right, you know? So absolutely. you don't need to downplay the experience because other people have had it worse. Yeah, you know, like what you've gone through is still, it. do you? Oh, yeah, I do that, I, that doesn't surprise me. I don't, I don't want people to like ever feel like, I don't know, I always, I want to be able to make sure that people know that I understand mm -hmm. that if they've been through right. hard things, like right. I was like, no, I get it. You want to make sure you validate other people's pain and experiences yes. as well. Yes. But you can invalidate yours by validating other people. Right, people's. right. That's something I've had to learn as I got older. It's, yeah. so, it's so hard. I naturally want to be like that person that anyone can kind of lean on and really empathize with people's right. experience. And even if it makes my experiences less than. Especially on the internet, because when you're talking to the internet, you're talking mm -hmm. to literally, you are talking to people that have had worse experiences. Experiences. Exactly. Just guaranteed. Exactly. So it, it does feel important to like qualify everything that you say. Mm -hmm. But I think that if that becomes like an internal filter, it yeah. can be really damaging oh, to always sure. talk to yourself that way. But mm -hmm. I, I also understand the need to say, I understand that it's worse for other people. Totally. I mean, it still sucks. I'm yeah. not going to ever say I was like, oh, it's so easy. Like it was hard and I struggled for many, many, many years. But it's not like I don't understand that other people have hard struggles as well. I'm so glad you're you today. Thank you. My little termite queen. Uh, yeah, I'm a termite queen. The termite queen ghoul. 
who also can do sorcery. Let me tell you that right now. Don't forget it. Yeah, do some sorcery. That's we have revealed right your skin so far. <gasps> oh, and a little tail of an eyebrow. Oh my god. This goodness. person has eyebrows. I do. Confirmed. I do. I can't. I want to like get a wipe and do like this. To mine? Mm -hmm. I'll let you do it at the end. <laughs> okay. I will. <laughs> That'll be the oh, trade. That's, my tr that's, that's my the trade. You can take that's off my, my makeup. My eyebrow. They're Every, shaved right now, so there's really not gonna shaved? be. Yeah, there's not gonna be much left. <gasps> the baby brows right now. Baby brows. Sorry, mm. I keep I keep blocking your cute little face. It's okay. Look at this. Oh God. <laughs> Don't. Yeah. Don't clock the self tan, no, y'all. Listen. Just leave it be. <laughs> Do not come for her self tan. I will cast a spell. <laughs> What's something you wish people knew about you or what you do? But first, a quick moment to thank the sponsor of this video, PayPal Honey. For me, retail therapy is real, and I get the most out of my online shopping therapy sessions with Honey. It's a magical little button on the top of your browser because Honey automatically searches for promo codes so you don't have to. And it is super easy to use because trust me, I cannot add any additional steps between me and a good online find. And Honey is like the little silent shopping buddy looking out for me on the sidelines, giving me all the thrills of saving money without having to do any extra work. Once you get Honey, it's always looking for coupons on sites you already use and products you're already buying. When there's a coupon, Honey finds discounts of 18% on average. And the best part? It's free. It's free, people! You can add Honey to your browser for free at joinhoney.com slash Mikey. Go to that link specifically, not just joinhoney.com. If you'd like to support the channel, let them know I sent you, and enjoy your new saving sidekick. Now back to the termite ghoul queen. <laughs> What's something you wish people knew about you or what you do? That's actually really hard because I, I do share a lot of my life online. Mm -hmm. And I do honestly share a lot of struggles that I deal with online with people. And I feel like that's like, not like a big part of my appeal, but I definitely feel like it's why I've been able to relate to a lot of people because I've been open with things I've dealt with and mental health issues and, you know, family issues and all these different kind of things. You know what I mean? Book. I'm pretty much an open book. I, I feel like I'm an open book. Unless you ask me a question I've just never answered, then I feel like I'm What's pretty open. What's a question open. no one's ever asked you before? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I wish that people can understand, like that could be a little more understanding. That's like something I wish is like people, I wish people could be more understanding of like people, creators online. Obviously I understand like that there's harder jobs, just like the thing, like I'm very much a person, like I get it, they're harder jobs. But it's not super easy creating content all the time and being creative and wanting to be on all, or being on all the time. You know, it's mm -hmm. hard, it's difficult, and people have, you know, moments where they don't want to do it, and they feel like this burnout. Burnout you know? is real. Burnout, it's yeah. just like a, it's kind of like a different kind of, it's like a creative depression. It's a mental thing, you mm -hmm. know? It's not like necessarily it's the most physically taxing job to be a creator online, but it is a very mentally, it can be. I was going to say, it's, it's it can intense. be. It can be. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, it's it's more of a mental and creative draining that mm -hmm. does happen. And it's really, really tough. And I have moments too. Like, I might be a really happy, chipper person online all the time, but I don't feel like that all the time. Right. You know, even Do you feel like you present. can show up on the days that you're not feeling chipper? Like, do you, do you try to hide it when you're not showing Absolutely. up as... 100%. The persona? Yep. You do. And I think that my persona actually helps me. And it, it gives me almost like this mask that I'm like, you know what? I might not be feeling the best, but as soon as I get there and I'm in the zone and I'm fully, you know, in the fantasy, then I feel like I can make it happen. Well, like an alter ego? Yeah, it's an alter ego. Love that. Yeah. Have exactly. you named your alter ego? Do you think of this other version of you as like a different person that like shows up when you need them to actually no not really i feel like there's like this confidence boost in a way where, and, like, and when i feel confident mm -hmm. i feel like i can kind of get through personal struggles i'm feeling you know what makes you feel the most confident when i look pretty <laughs> <laughs> no honestly i feel the most confident when i'm just you know feeling my best honestly like when i feel like i look good and i feel good and i've had a great night's rest and i have caffeine in me Ooh. you know all these different kind of things i feel like good like i can like be good with the world and I can handle the struggles that come with. With a little bit of caffeine. I need the boost. Pick a question, any question. What is the best compliment you have ever been given? No, I think the best compliment I've ever been given is that is when people tell me that I can like light up a room and stuff. Things like that with my personality, the best kind of compliments you for me. You do. Stop it. You, you very much do. Thank you. You like are a light. Oh. And you're so like personable and Thank you. like 
I don't know. I like when you're around because I, I feel like I feel like it's so easy to feel close to you so quickly. See, those are the kind of compliments that are my favorite. Is when people feel like it's not that necessarily something that I've worked on. I feel like I just am like that. But yeah, it's something that I notice about myself. Like I feel like I can be that kind of person. Where, like if you need to vent to me, like talk to me. Like mm -hmm. I'm there. Like I feel like I'm like that. So when people notice that. It makes me just feel like oh cool. Like I, you've always I feel been like that I'm doing person. Doing a good job. Too. Yeah. Because we've known each other for some time now. Some. Many Sometimes, moons. some would say. Many moons. And you've always oh, been God, that person. How long have we known each other? I would say like not eight years. Eight years? Yeah. In LA, that's 30 years. Yeah. We have a long friendship going. 30 year friendship. A 30 year friendship. <laughs> <laughs> we started at the same time, which is cool because I feel like you and I, we obviously have had very different experiences, mm -hmm. but we've we've been around in a similar time of the internet. Totally. To and we've been them. through a lot. Yeah. We've seen I some say things. so. We've, we've seen, seen some, some shit. Things. <laughs> Should I pick another one? Yeah, we're, getting, we're getting closer and closer. I know, we're, we're starting to reveal an eyebrow. Okay, who is it? I feel like a lot of people know already. You think? Yeah, I think so. I think anyone who knows you already knows. Would you rather never use a spoon again or <gasps> never use a fork again? This is an easy one for me. Is it an easy one for you? Yeah. You know what? That's shaking me a little bit to my core. I think for me, I I don't I think I need to be able to use a spoon. Like honestly. What? Because I like You would have picked fork too? Fork. Yeah, fork anytime. I I need a spoon. Throw the spoon out. No, you don't need a spoon. You just I, Oh. You know what? But the thing is I'm thinking about like, let's say eating steak. Right? You can hold the spoon down and cut it. Like flatten it. I mean you're not wrong. It's your truth. It's my truth. It's your truth. And, <laughs> and I want a spoon. <laughs> Wants a spoon, I damn really, it. I've honestly never really thought about it. Which content creator? Am I big spoon or would little throw spoon? Throw out a fork with, with a spoon. A spoon. Yeah. That's sick. That, I don't do that. We gotta move you. I don't do that. I feel confident as ever. <laughs> I feel like like Leatherface, like the oh. like Texas Chainsaw Massacre yes. energy, or like that clown in American Horror Story. You like look just like a clown. I do, huh? Yeah. Isn't it giving that energy? A little creepy clown. I'm feeling that. So you do not ever use a spoon. Honestly, our forks, they disappear so fast in this house and we always have an excess of spoons. We just don't use spoons gotcha. very often. Yeah. We're not spoony type people or forky like people. Yogurt. I don't do yogurt. Also, what about gogurt? Oh. Yogurt on the go. I'm you don't need a spoon think, for I'm that. Think about gogurt. How could you not think about gogurt? That's I'm all I think about. I'm a flop. All day, I'm every a flop. day. I'm a flop. I like the kangaroo ones. What are those called? Dunkaroos? Dunkaroos? Mm. Not even close to the same thing, but yeah, they're real good. I like good. those, though. Yeah, me too. I almost bought Dunkaroos recently because I haven't had them in years, but I think about I them all the time. That. We were in Dallas, and we went to a 7-Eleven that was closing down, and they had everything was on sale for like a dollar, and I found Dunkaroos for the first them. time in years. Well, they were expired for like three years. They were on the shelf, but they had been expired for like three years. I think that's why that 7-Eleven might be shutting down. Please don't sue me, 7-Eleven. Would you rather? No, my job. What's the hardest lesson you've had to learn? Work isn't everything. Ooh. It's true. Work is not everything. Say it louder for the people in the back. <laughs> we got a bunch work, of we got a bunch of workaholics in this room right work now. Work isn't everything, and what's really really important is your happiness. And I know what it feels if work like, makes you happy. I know. I was gonna say, and I know sometimes it feels like doing well in work makes you happy, but that's a fleeting thing. Like why? you need to find Tell me real, why. Work can go away in an instant. I agree. But like <laughs> things that are in like things that are real, things that actually make you genuinely happy. You know, like family, friends. You know, all these kind of like these passions that you could. Potentially have those you know potentially could knock away super quickly and things that you know you can really focus on those things and if you find true happiness in that everything else is just kind of like a side thing i agree i'm not like dumb like i know everyone's situations are different and people have to work and i totally understand that disclaimers there you disclaimers. go i'm a disclaimer but you are a disclaimer i'm a disclaimer <laughs> myself but it's true that if you're the type of person that's just like a workaholic and you don't have to be mm -hmm. you know try to focus on other things when I got really sick and I, I literally couldn't speak. I couldn't use my arms normally. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even sit comfortably. All yeah. of a sudden overnight, I couldn't work. Yeah. And I'm someone who has always thrown myself into work mm -hmm. for a lot of different reasons because I thought that was like the most important thing to me. And mm -hmm. being in chronic pain for so long taught me that the thing that actually matters the most to me is the people in my life, my friends, mm -hmm. Anthony Your Ripley. <laughs> and creature, and creature. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow, could you suck? She's right there. I can see her. It's, it's different. Okay, yes. My health, mm. yes. My family, my parents. Like, it, that's absolutely the thing where at the end of the day, when you don't feel good, you don't you don't care about work. You yeah. don't use work to comfort you. Mm. Sometimes it makes it worse. Yeah, In fact, totally. oftentimes it can make it worse. Yeah. But the thing that makes you feel better are who you surround yourself with. So, yeah, that's it's a hard lesson to learn for sure. It is a hard lesson. And sometimes you got to kind of get it slapped into your face to learn it. How'd you learn it? Well, you know... A long ago, many, many moons ago, I dealt with a lot of online drama and I, again, work made me so happy and I was super successful and I was smooth sailing and, you know, when you're doing good at something, you don't really learn a lot of life lessons, let me tell you. It's you true, learn, You it's learn true. life lessons when you fall down and yes, you have to get back up. absolutely. So, after I had fallen down and I hit the pavement, jaw first, I was like, you know what, I don't think that this is what's genuinely making me happy and it was more of a fleeting happiness. Uh, real happiness was truly, like, family, friends, spending quality time with people. That's what I genuinely found my happiness in. And ever since then, I've genuinely felt like a happier person. Isn't it interesting that, like, even though the hard things really, really suck. Really suck. You really do. Like, those are the moments that you, like, level up as mm -hmm. a person. Those are the things that teach you what you really enjoy. Uh -huh. And they change you for the better. As long as, I think, actually... You have to look for it, though. It's kind of hard to not change for the better totally. when you go through something hard. Yeah, and you have to, like, kind of, like... I always, like, say you always find what you seek, right? So it's, like, if you are just going to be, like, woe is me, I hate myself, I hate the world, I hate how this happened to me, and you're not, like, trying to improve and find a silver lining or something, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be the worst experience of your life. But if you're trying to be, like, you know what, this happened to me, it sucked, and I can I understand that, but how can I find a positive in this? That's truly where, like, magic happens, I feel. I love the question, how is the worst thing that ever happened to you the best thing that ever happened to you? In a way. Mm -hmm. You know, in a weird way, it really, it really was in, like, the weirdest, weirdest way. Mm -hmm. And I don't, How long like, did it take it? you to feel that way, though? Years. Yeah. <laughs> I, would say, I would say it took me like th at least three years to feel like not feel angry mm -hmm. and to like feel very like you know accept like what it is and i always felt like there was you know i always feel like there's like a plan right there's like oh, like this big plan and i always felt that and like growing up and so i'm like you know what maybe it's just part of what it is for me you decided to surrender and go with the flow yeah that's what all the philosophies of the world mm -hmm. basically all boil down to i was like you know what i'm just gonna surrender to this moment and i feel like i'm gonna move forward and move up in the world and even though i you know my career took a hit i feel like personally i leveled up and i feel like it's also really hard when like you're doing something you're doing it really well and you're successful at it like you kind of you kind of get horse blinders mm -hmm. like you kind of start to see things as like oh my gosh if this is what like i'm meant to do i'm so good and like all these things that like, kind of fall to the wayside because it's like well i'm i'm slaying it why would i what, what life lessons do I have to learn? I think that everyone goes through that in life, but as content creators, you have to make those really messy life uh, lessons and... and in the public. Growth in the public eye under a microscope 24-7, which can be a lot. It, it, well, especially because, you know, being content creators is such a new thing in mm -hmm. a way, you know, like... Yeah, who knows how bad this is going to fuck us all up? You, we don't know. <laughs> we have no idea. Who knows if we'll even be on the earth in the next 50 years? And if the earth just doesn't fuck us off. Too real. Too real. Too real. Too real. I just went there as the, as the queen. Twist. This is Bill um, Gates, and he's warning, us, actually... warning us. Warning us. He's warning I'm us about Gates, climate change. Totally. Would you rather walk in on your parents or have your parents walk in on you? Oh Mark. my god. Mark wrote all the would you rather and sick. Mark is a sick Mark, um, what the hell? I would I don't <laughs> I, you know what? Oh my god. This is what I put in. It's just right at the end. This is this is the kind of would you rather's I wanted, but also I'm appalled. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm shook. Which is what I, I would I rather it's sick. I feel like I'd rather walk in on them. Horrible. Horrible. I hate I hate the answer. But the thing is I would die of embarrassment if they walked in on me. I would, I would pass away. I'm also like literally having gay sex. <laughs> and my poor pet parents <laughs> would die. Okay, so I'm, I'm taking one for the team. Okay, yeah. You know what? That's and I'm good. like, they can be under the covers. I won't see anything. <laughs> Anthony's laughing there from the a, other room. Under the covers. I didn't see shit. Okay? <laughs> you just close the door quietly yeah, like. I'm like that, that question was sick. <laughs> Mark's a sicko. You gotta mm. feel more, but right, I feel right. like, you know, I'm close to just revealing you. So. I know, we're, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. You're starting to look so deranged. Would you rather <gasps> be very rich and very dumb or very poor and very smart? Pass. <laughs> I don't know. Pass. I'm, Hard pass. That's me now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dumb now. 
What makes you feel the most proud? <laughs> I'm bald. Your hair's a little wild over there. <laughs> oh my god, you look so much like you all of a sudden. Huh? Do I, I? Yeah, I gotta keep this on. Because okay. the ears do give it away. You're right. I'm telling you, the ears are a he, cool. He I'm said fine. he said I the said, ears like, were gonna give it away. away. I'm like, no, they won't. Um, but suddenly what makes it's you. Proud? What makes me the most proud? <gasps> yeah, I can do the earmuffs. My ears are hot, huh? They're on fire. Um, what makes me the most proud is I think seeing what I've built and how it's helped people. I wanted to find a community where I could relate in some way, in some capacity, and find people that, you know, I can connect with. And the fact that I've been able to, you know, do what I've done with my career and help the people I've helped and got emails and or just people being like, you know, you being yourself helped me be myself. And I feel like I'm very proud of that because I'm not a lot of people can say that, like, that they've inspired millions of people just to be uniquely themselves. I think that the more anyone is themselves, the more it can inspire anyone else to be themselves. But Absolutely. I think a lot of people are too afraid to truly lean into what makes them them because of fear of judgment yeah, and rejection absolutely. and but truly like what is what is the most magnetic people I've ever met are people that are so unapologetically them, so comfortable in their own skin, mm. so like willing to be different. And those are all my favorite kinds of people. So I, I try to remind myself that I want to show up more as my true self. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's so hard true. to do. It's so hard. It's, it was, I think for me, a lot of time, for a lot of my life, I was hiding myself mm -hmm. because of, you know, growing up in, in a religious environment and, you know, I was very much people pleaser kid growing up. So mm, now, people pleasing. Oh, uh, very that. Mm -hmm. So now it's like I have a harder time being more quiet in a way or hiding myself because I'm like, oh, I finally got to this point. I can't like go back. I can't go back into the closet mm -hmm. you know, in a way. So that's kind of why I try to be the most me possible because I kind of wish I had someone I could look to and seeing them being like really authentically themselves because when I was growing up, all the gay stories and all the anything you would see on TV of gay people, they were like all dying of HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. Like that was like the story for That's gay people. Traumatic. You know, so for me, I was like, oh my God, I would never want this. I would never want this. I don't want to, mm -hmm. I don't want to be that. I wish I had that, you know, growing up. But so it's, it's nice. I feel proud that I'm able to, I've been able to do that for some people. Yeah, that's it's so interesting. I've, I've never thought about like what was the only context in which you learned about other people like yourself in that time yeah. frame. And yeah, it was just all negative and, and scary. And yeah, it was all bad. And it was like gay people are going to hell. And right. that's like what this, I mean, sometimes that's not still very much people's views of things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was so much now because of social media, you're able to see so many other stories that are successful. It's like, oh, like you just because you're gay doesn't mean you're going to die or all these crazy things that's kind of what it meant for a long time it was like a death sentence damn that's heavy have you seen it like this mask yeah you look ridiculous i look like 11 with my hair flat like this <laughs> and the ears out i look I'm like, like oh, 11 <laughs> you are papa or whatever the f <laughs> says. I feel like we're almost ready to reveal you because it's so close <laughs> to coming off and i feel like most people know exactly who we're talking yeah, to yeah i think at this point <laughs> Inner peace. Inner peace. World peace. Oh my god. Yep, right there. Yep, right. The, the lid got me really oh, good. Wait, so I want to tell you why we had to take our time down here, baby. Oh, yeah. Because we got facial hair in the house. We yeah, got I, a whole beard in the house. I came with even a bigger beard. <laughs> and I had to take Anthony's trimmer. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. going to tell you later. <gasps> I saw it. Did you think it was me that used it? I did think it was you. I was like, what are you? Doing? You know, I'm just doing stuff. What are you trimming? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, but, it was literally right there in the bathroom. Like, it, it was asking to be used. True. But oh, he, he already knew. He knew that I was going to be dumb and chill with the face. Now the you're beard. an anglerfish. <gasps> I am an anglerfish. Turn your head. I want a little thing. Mm -hmm. There you, you go. Like Papa. <laughs> One more good question because I'm about to take oh, it off. Rip, rip it. I mean, it up, it this, so. What is your favorite memory? Spending like Christmases with my family when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Like when you're older, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. For like a few years, I was like the only child. Those like first Christmases when we were younger, it's like, it's just, they remember such fond memories for me. We, it's not that we don't get together now, but it's just not the same. Of course older, I everyone am. has like, you know, everyone like, has jobs and everyone has to like deal with things and everyone has partners and mm -hmm. all this stuff so it's not the same as like that family unit those are some of my favorite memories is like the holidays with my family yeah i feel like there's a real sense of grief 
when you become an adult and you realize you're an adult and you realize that like those magical childhood memories never really you never get to have them again they don't come back you just have whatever stored these last ones by the nose hairs (laughs) (laughs) you look beautiful your face is so big (laughs) it's manny it's me it's manny in ua Didn't you think his name was Manny oh, Mua? Anthony thinks your name's Manny Mua. Take off your, yeah, you can just derobe now. You are killing me. You don't like my little gloves? I <laughs> love my little gloves. Yeah, I so. Feel like, I feel like weirdly like attractive and this like weird ghoul glam. It's giving yeah. me, I let him eat my ass. I would. <laughs> your doppelganger. <laughs> how, did, how did you feel wearing a mask? I loved it. Yeah? I thought it was fantastic. I, it was It was very freeing. Good. Even though I was literally stuck. Like, I loved it. The snot was stuck. Oh yeah. But your mind. Yes, was free as a bird. Good. Mm-hmm. But thank you for having oh me. Oh, I had so much fun. Oh, you're so I'm makeup. so gooey. I <laughs> it's kind of hot in a weird way. I don't. I don't get it. If you guys understand what I'm talking about, like comment. Like, am I crazy? Yes. Would you let him hit? Would you let me hit like this specifically? <laughs> like this specifically. Specifically like this. Thank you so much for trick or treating with me. I loved it, and I love that this is a trick or treat. Like, that's is so this cute. Good? Is it's this a good so thing? perfect. I don't know. Oh! I love it. We're already here. Let's make sure we get it even. Hey, hello. Hello. Yes, I love it. Hello. Hello. Zombies. Zombies. Nice. But not many people can pull up my brows. Let me tell you that. Thank and you. you can. I was just born and you're this way. Still hot. Look hot. Thank you. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Oh, Come here. Yeah. I need to. I need to fix this a little. We've got to fix. I'll do. This. I'll do a double. Yes. 